Michael Schneider, thank you very much indeed. Well, the British government had until now been firmly behind this deal, insisting that it was both vital and affordable. I'm joined by Tom Greatrix, Chief Executive of the Nuclear Industry Association, which represents the, the UK's civil nuclear industry. Tom Greatrix, there's really no certainty that the project will go ahead. I mean, the Business and Energy Secretary, Greg Clark, sounded pretty lukewarm tonight. The government will now consider carefully, he said, all the component parts of this project and make its decision in the early autumn. Doesn't sound like much of a commitment. And in the sentence that you neglected to read before that, he also made the point that nuclear remains a significant part of the government's vision for our future energy supplies. And he's right. Well, I think he said of the mix. Of the mix, exactly, yes. And no one is suggesting that you would only have one energy source, or some people do, but they, I don't think they could be particularly relied upon to, to formulate our energy policy for the future. We need a low-carbon mix for the future. We have, as John Moylan said in his discussion with you earlier on, we have, over the course of the period between 2010 and 2030, 65% of our electricity generation capacity is going offline. We need to replace that. Um, we need to do that in as low-carbon a way as possible. We need to do that by the best possible mix of a range of different technologies, but what nuclear provides is secure and baseload low-carbon power to complement more intermittent sources of low-carbon power renewables and also developing technologies which will develop over time in terms of the way we manage demand and how we're more efficient with it. There's not one silver bullet simple answer to this massive challenge that we've got both in terms of our energy security and our climate commi commitments, which are UK commitments and now international commitments, and nuclear is an integral part of solving that. You heard a French Union representative there telling us that he believes a strong project a strong risk that the project will fail and actually bring down EDF. Well, if that were to happen, if it failed, who'd pick up the tab? The taxpayer? Well, EDF's decision today is at the, uh, is at the end of a, a long process and it has gone on for a long time and they've had to obviously evaluate a range of different factors to see whether they're confident of being able to go ahead and deliver this project. And the important point is that there isn't any consumer contribution to this until it is up and running and generating electricity and that is the responsibility of EDF as the developer and they themselves will say they've learned lots of lessons from Flamanville the project in North France which will now be generating probably the end of 2018 it's 99.5 percent constructed but there have been issues there have been issues around design changing part of the way through construction there have been issues around the level of engagement with uh, contractors and in procurement all of those things uh, because they've learned from that will not happen with Hinkley but there's still EDF's responsibility to deliver that project my concern now is that we have now uh, in the UK we have a supply chain that's been built up and been developed ready to deliver this because we need this power we need low carbon power we need secure reliable power as part of our energy mix we need to get on and do this and that's why I'm hoping that the government take their decision very soon because if uh, if it if it goes on for uh, a, a lengthy period of time we're going to run into the risk of having real problems in terms of our energy supplies and then what happens is we end up paying a lot more and we end up paying for much more um, much more dirty power which we can't afford to do if we're going to meet our climate commitments and we can't afford to do if we want to be secure for energy in the future. But this is a new government, a Brexit government, an entirely changed climate, looking at all huge infrastructure costs like this, wondering about the implications after we've left the European Union. You must be worried that actually there might be a profound change, of course, and they might simply decide now to turn back. Well, I mean, I think it's right. You've got a new Prime Minister, a new Chancellor of the Exchequer, a new Energy Secretary and a new Department. Uh, and it's important, obviously, that they are, they, you know, they look at this. But I, what my um, plea is that they get on and do that as quickly as possible because the clock is ticking. It has been ticking for some time now. We don't have a choice about this in the, in the sense that we do need to replace that capacity that's going offline. We need a secure, reliable energy supply for the future because whatever implications there might have been from the decision to leave the European Union for the economy, not having reliable energy and electricity supply is going to have even more significant economic implications. We need to get this built. We need to get other power stations built, because if we don't, we're going to be in a lot worse position as a country. Tom Grotrix, thank you very much thank indeed. You.